Well, hello everybody, I'm Pearl of Wisdom and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom and today we're going to be looking at some unbelievable moves that just happened. It's now Saturday, July 17, just before they were going to, there was a roster freeze, a flurry of activity, a flurry of activity um, came about and we're going to talk about all of them. Starting with uh, the Det- a really difficult one for me, the Detroit Red Wings New York Islanders trade. We'll also be looking at the Philadelphia Nashville trade of defensemen and uh, several of the other moves that are out there. All, um, Lad going to Arizona and all of that. It's going to be really exciting. Let's Perlo dance together, shall we? You guys are getting good at that. Woo! All right, as you can see, Steel Flyers All Sports Network, that's what pays my bills, and uh, they are a fantastic network. Check it out, www.steelflyers, all sports, all teams in every sport. We are expanding, it's growing, and it's amazing. We're getting hits like crazy. Uh, Also, the NHL Pearl of Wisdom show, I uh, do a little show five days a week there. Um, be watching out for it. It's uh, interactive. You get to, when you listen to this video and you want to tell me something, first of all, comment section. Also, you can go live and we can banter back and forth there on that show three to five Monday, Wednesday, and Friday during the day and evenings 7.30 to 9.30 Tuesday and Thursday. I'm getting that right. It just all changed. But we got to get at this. So let's get at her. Okay. Um, First thing we got is the Letty trade. And the reason why this is really difficult for me is um, Stevie Eiserman is one of my favorite humans, certainly male on the planet. Probably my favorite. My favorite male human on the planet. And he got worked in this trade so far. I'll, we'll go over the trade first. The Red Wings have added to their back end in advance of tomorrow's transaction freeze, acquiring defensemen by this is way, Brian LaRose. This is uh, pro hockey rumors. I love this. Uh, These guys are great. Um, Nick Letty from the Islanders in exchange for Richard Panic. And a 52nd overall pick in this month's draft. Detroit is also retaining 50% of Panic's contract using their first of three salary retention slots in the process. Why? Letty is terrible defensively. Uh, I know he's going to bring value in the sense that he's a great power play guy and he can help them, these young guys, uh, probably with the power play, which Detroit really needs. But there is no reason why you need to get a $5.5 million player in a cap, flat cap world that you give up a second to and throw a player in of Panic's uh, abilities, which isn't that great, by the way, and uh, Retain 50% of his salary so the Islanders can have more cap room? Doesn't make any sense at all. Uh, um, Stevie Eiserman loses in this deal. No doubt about it. Uh, Letty was being chopped to avoid potential of losing him in the upcoming expansion draft. That's the other thing. He had no leverage. Now, he is only 30 years old. And he has averaged 21 minutes per game for each of the last six seasons. But the fact of the matter is they didn't need to retain or anything here. They were going to lose them for free. I think there's more to this deal that we're going to see somewhere down the road here. I think that Stevie Eisenman's doing uh, um, Lamorello and the Islanders a solid right now for the benefit of getting something later. I really do here. It's the only thing that makes sense. Stevie Eisenman is a brilliant uh, hockey mind and um, five and a half million dollar price tag for, yeah, sure. He's a decent offensive defenseman. Good offensive defenseman, you could even say. 
but his defense is really poor and he's getting up there and he's going to need another contract. So we'll, so we'll see what happens. But as it stands, I'm not a big fan of that. And uh, then there's, we'll see what he does with the second pick right away as we go up to the top here. Uh, Okay, Arizona acquire Andrew Ladd and multiple draft picks. Okay, uh, he gives they uh, Lamorello from the New York Islanders then gives Andrew Ladd to the Arizona Coyotes, which is basically a cap uh, dump, and he gives them that second round pick that he got from Detroit in order to acquire. The cap room of Andrew Ladd. Plus, he gets cap room from Letty. The New York Islanders, who are pretty much buried right up to the top of the cap, now have $12.5 million in cap room to work with. And they haven't lost anybody off the roster in expansion yet. They can use another pick if they want to remove another player off their roster. Because what they're trying to do, and you, I, I mentioned this in a video I just did, where of what all the teams in the league are doing this offseason or where, which direction they're heading, they're looking for a big winger that they can put on with uh, Lad, a shooting winger. There are some rumors out there that they're looking at Tarasenko and a few other players. So... Detroit just gives them that opportunity to do that, and uh, I don't know. But anyways, talking about this move here, good move by both teams. I think Arizona isn't trying to really win next year. Uh, so bringing in this, taking on this cap space that probably will be LT, a long-term injury cap space. They don't have to use the player. However, it does say Amber... Uh, who broke the story, David Amber, who broke the story, who is a big uh, insider, said, interesting, Amber notes that Ladd is indeed expected to play for Arizona. He has been in, he was injured all year last year. He's had problems with injuries ever since he was acquired by the New York Islanders. Uh, the 35-year-old played in just four games this season. Sorry, yeah, he played in four games, spending most of both campaigns with this $5.5 cap hit buried in the AHL. He wasn't even playing in the NHL when he wasn't injured. That's right. He was playing in the AHL. So Arizona hopes that in time they can see some semblance of the former perennial 20 goal scorer. I don't, I don't know about that. I think they just want him to retire or not retire, but just take his uh, long-term injury cap to hit the bottom of the cap floor because Arizona does not want to spend money at all. This would go on insurance and makes it a lot easier for the owner and all that stuff like that. Uh, it, while, it, it was a, t a high price to pay for the Islanders, but it's well worth it for the cap space they're getting back here now. Uh, they have to re-sign Adam Pellich and Anthony Beauvillier. So that $12.5 is probably not going to be totally used up there, but it's going to be close to with those two. I still think there's more in the works here. I wouldn't doubt if they see them get, putting bar, uh, getting rid of Varlamov and, um, like I said, attaching a pick to another player off their roster to get that high-quality score. Um, but fantastic moves for Lamorello, no doubt about that. And for Arizona, it works really well for them. They needed draft picks. There's some other... Uh, there was some extra picks here as well. Uh, Lad has not played in a high level. Yeah, okay. Um, first, I want to say we'll receive the higher pick of the Islanders' two 2022 second round selections, their own, and the Colorado Avalanches. The third round pick is transferred if Lad plays at least one game in 2022 23. Probably not going to happen. But basically two second round picks. And they lost a lot of picks because uh, the previous manager 
management or whatever circumvented some rules and they ended up having to lose a first, a second, and all kinds of picks. Brings back some picks. Nice move for them. Vegas Golden Knights then uh, uh, acquire... The Vegas Golden Knights acquire uh, Brett Howden from the New York Rangers. Nice little move. Didn't cost them much. A seventh. Sounds like the New York the New York Rangers were going to be putting him out to expansion. I don't know why it hasn't worked out for Howden in New York. They haven't really found caught a liking to him. Um, I think it had something to do with the fact that uh, D'Angelo Howden and Lemieux kind of hung out with each other, and we all know, I don't know if you know what happened with D'Angelo, but they're going to buy him out. He said some things in the room that they weren't happy with. So I think Howden has a lot of offensive upside, and just like they did, Vegas did with Chandler Stevenson, they could have made a really huge move here. Uh, uh, nice pickup for them for sure. They uh, then will go. We'll go to the next one. Uh, New York Rangers then obtain the rights to Barkley Goudreau, which is really interesting. They gave a seventh round pick, and basically all they really got did here was get an opportunity to talk to Goudreau before everybody else. Uh, Barkley Goudreau will now would now replace uh, the aforementioned Howden. Was that a seventh or a third? Uh, Fourth round pick, not a seventh, sorry. Um, I think they'll sign him. I think Goudreau will be happy to go to New York. It's a perfect spot for him. With They'll be able to butter him up and say, we just traded a guy, you've got a spot for you. We'll give you what, you know, reasonably whatever you want. I think they'll sign Barkley Goudreau. I think it's a good pickup. They uh, kind of character guy like that is what they thought Howden would be. So we'll see if that turns out for him, but nice little move. Of course, now we have this three-player swap, which kind of goes with the first one that we were talking about, about getting Howden. Ryan Ellis goes to the Philadelphia Flyers in exchange for Philip Myers, center Nolan Patrick, and the number two overall pick, Uh, the, sorry, Nolan Patrick, who was the number two overall pick in 2017. Uh, the Predators then flip Patrick to Vegas for another center in Cody Glass. Uh, the number six overall pick in 2017. This is purely a player-for-player -player trade with no picks or prospects changing hands. Philadelphia just knocks this right out of the park. Crazy. Uh, Myers for Nolan, uh, Nolan Patrick and getting Cody Glass. Cody Glass better be darn good for them. And I know that Vegas hasn't been happy with his development. It sounds like he's got a, there's a maturity issue there. And Poyle, the general manager for the Nashville Predators, liked to, likes to take on these guys. He did it with Luke Cunning. Now he's doing it with Cody Glass. But, and, it is definitely on paper for sure right now a mismatch of a trade for the Philadelphia Flyers. Ryan Ellis had a bit of a poor year last year with 18 points in uh, 51 games, which is lower than his average by quite a bit. But overall, he's a 40 to 50 point defenseman that plays everywhere well. He's not the biggest guy in the world, but he plays big. He plays tough. He plays defensively fantastic. His, he can skate it out of the zone. He can pass it out of the zone. He's, he's, he's a player. He's a team's everything on defense. He, he's, he can play the power play. He can play the penalty kill. Where Philip Myers is a six foot five defenseman who can skate. And I, the only thing I'm worried about here is the Nashville Predators are known for making for taking guys like Philip Myers or and drafting players and bringing them up very well. Their, their player development system is fantastic. They may end up finding something in Myers that makes this trade look fairly even. But as it is right now, 
Philadelphia needed a guy like Ellis. They got a guy like Ellis. I would have made this trade all day long. As far as Nolan Patrick, man, I, I wish you the best. And uh, you're, he, he's had some sort of uh, medical issues with headaches and all of that, uh, which has prevented him from playing for quite some time. They finally lost trust or something happened there and he wanted to move on somewhere else, get a fresh uh, look. And now he's going to a Vegas team that has shown to do really well at identifying talent. They picked up Chandler Stevenson, who played on their top line, maybe a little over his head. He picked him up from Washington, who was playing him on the fourth line, maybe a little over his head, but doing it still very well. So maybe they can bring in Nolan Patrick. And like Dyke says here, he was a second overall pick in 2017. They can, If they can turn him into half of what he was ever expected to be, fantastic move for them. And for Nashville, if Cody Glass, who was supposed to be a second-line center, if they can work with him and he actually becomes this, this trade doesn't look as bad. But as it stands right now, they absolutely crush it. Uh, Ellis carries some, he's got, he makes, uh, what he's, he's on the books for another six years, I believe at five and a half million, no, six point something million, 6.75 million. Not very hefty for what he is to tell you the honest truth. He's only 30 years old. He's going to, he'll be 35 at the end of this. It's not a crazy contract. It is more than what Myers is, but I do that deal all day. Uh, now, next, we got Toronto Maple Leafs acquired Jared McCann. Beautiful move, except that I'm a little concerned about Jared McCann's attitude. This is his third team uh, already, and I believe he's only about like 25 years old, if that. Uh, Florida let him go in a deal to get Hornquist. Um and then he, he spends a very short time in Pittsburgh, puts up some decent numbers, but still they, were, were, they weren't going to protect him in the expansion draft and decide to make a deal like this for Philip Hollander, who they actually traded to Toronto to get Kasperi Kapanen just last year. And a seven, seventh round pick in 2023, they're basically handing it over to him. I'm not sure I get it. Um, maybe it's a makeup deal because they gave them Kapanen, so this is kind of finishing off the deal because something like of that nature. That's possible, but it doesn't really make much sense. This is a great, whatever it is. McCann's making three million. He can play center and left wing and puts up points as long as his attitude is okay. This is a great deal for Toronto. Fantastic win by a long shot. More I think about it, the more I think it's sort of this all went hand in hand. There's a lot of backroom talk that goes on with general managers, like I just mentioned with the Detroit trade, that sometimes we don't know the whole story, and you see it kind of unravel a little more in the in future deals that happen between teams. So. Uh, Vancouver Canucks trade for Jason Dickinson. Nice little move. I'm not, I'd have to go through it, but I'm surprised Jenkins, Jason Dickinson was not, was going to be exposed for the expansion draft. But um, he's, he, he can play all positions. He's probably, a, you know, a third, fourth guy. He can play, he's a utility guy, uh, a good Utility player. I think Jim Benning did a pretty good job here. He got 25 points. He's not going to put up huge points. But doesn't sound like they are, they're they're done with Vertanen now. So Dickinson comes in and they don't – I don't think they gave up much. Uh, third round pick, eh, that's a pretty significant pick. But Dickinson's a young guy. He's got a lot of room for improvement. I like it. Good move for uh, Vancouver. Sharks pick acquire Aiden Hill, uh, which means that Darcy Kemper is staying probably in Arizona now. Um, nice move by them. I, Aiden Hill looks like he's going to be a solid backup. Um, and they signed Coronar as well, which means they're going to protect Aiden Hill and let Jones go uh, at least be, un, be unprotected in the expansion draft. I have a feeling the Sharks picked up a bunch of picks 
in the last year. I would not be surprised if they use one of their picks to entice uh, entice Seattle to pick Jones, who's got six million for like another four to five years. I don't know if they're going to be able to entice them even with the pick, but if they could, it would be huge because they need the cap space and they could then go out and acquire a goaltender to help Aiden Hill that makes them more likely to make the playoffs. They're in a very difficult situation in San Jose. So we'll see what happens. But as far as this deal is concerned, uh, oh, no, sorry. He sends Cornar back, Cornar back to or Cornash back to Arizona. So they don't keep Cornash in this deal. I didn't even read that the first time I did it. The Yotes will also receive another second round pick. Fantastic. They got another second round pick um, in 2022. So they're, they're picking up picks that they've lost. We're getting ready for that ma- major rebuild there in Arizona. I think it's a good move for both. Aiden Hill has looked really good. I don't think his upside is a number one, but at least they have some backup for Jones if he doesn't get picked. I think it's a pretty solid solid play. Um, and that is it, actually. Gone through all the major moves and all the major... I hope you enjoyed that fine, fine uh, broadcasting myself. <laughs> Programming, I should say. Feel free to hit the subscribe Hit the bell. I'll send you a My NHL Pearls of Wisdom necklace, Perlocopter to your door by Hernandez or Melissa, signed by me. Well, what what, what more do you want than that? And I'm going to Perlo dance you out here, boys and girls. Have a great day. Okay. Bye.